Hi, my name is JJ Singh from Partook University, and we're continuing our discussion using the textbook Elementary Algebra by John Redden. With the third section of chapter one, we're going to learn how to multiply and divide sign integers. We're going to learn how to translate uh, English sentences involving multiplication and division into mathematical statements or mathematical expressions. We'll learn how to determine the prime factorization of composite numbers, and we'll also learn how to interpret the results of quotients involving zero. Here we have uh, multiplying numbers, like in this example, which we're going to get to. You have 3 times 4. The dot means you're multiplying. The result, 12, is called the product. Okay. Now, if you were dividing, let's say you're dividing 3 divided by 4, which is 0.75, uh, that would be called the quotient. Okay. The result of dividing is called the quotient. This illustrates that multiplying is equivalent to adding. If you think about having three bags of apples, each bag has four apples in it. To find the total number of apples, you multiply three bags times four, bag, uh, four apples per bag equals 12 apples. Or you could just count how many apples you have in each bag. I've got four here and plus four there and plus four there, so I have a total of 12. So the product of two positive numbers is positive. And similarly, the product of a positive number and a negative number can be shown like this. Here you have 3 times negative 4, and so you're just going to add negative 4 and negative 4 and negative 4, and you get negative 12. Okay? So the product of a positive number and a negative number is negative. What if you multiply two negative numbers? Uh, well, let's look at this example and see if we see a pattern here. 3 times negative 3 equals negative 9. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 0 times negative 3 is 0. So here the products increase by 3. Positive 3, right? 0 times anything is 0. Um, any 0 times any real number is 0. Okay, so now we're doing two negative numbers. Negative 1 times negative 3 equals 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 equals 6. Negative 3 times negative 3 equals 9. So, here you have the pattern continuing, uh, increasing the products by 3. So, in all these examples, you have something being multiplied by negative 3, and you notice that the something being multiplied by it is decreasing. It's becoming less and less positive here, going from 3 down to 2, down to 1, down to 0. And then, once it passes 0, it becomes more and more negative. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so this shows that the product of two negative numbers is positive. So positive times positive is positive. Positive times negative is negative. Negative times negative is positive. Okay? And that's what that's illustrating here. So if you want negative results, if you have a negative number being multiplied by something, if that something is positive, you're going to have negative results. Um, the less positive it becomes, the less negative those results become. If you have that negative thing, which is negative 3 being multiplied by something that's negative, the results, the results can be positive. The more negative the something you're multiplying it by becomes, the more positive your result becomes, okay? So, again, positive times negative is negative, negative times negative is positive. The rules for division are the same because division can always be rewritten as multiplication. Negative 10 divided by 2 is the same as negative 10 times a half, which is negative 5. Okay, so here you have negative divided by positive is negative. And if you're going to go the opposite way, actually you could go negative 5 times 2 equals negative 10. So there you have neg times pos equals neg, right? Negative times positive equals negative. What about negative 10 divided by negative 2? Well, that's the same as negative 10 times negative a half. So here you have negative times negative is positive, whereas here you had negative times positive is negative. Okay? So negative divided by positive is negative. Negative divided by negative is positive. The rules for multiplying and dividing should not be confused with the fact that the sum of two negative numbers is negative. Okay? That's adding. That's just starting with something that's negative and adding more negativity to it, so you end up with a result that's even more negative. Okay? That's something we talked about in the previous section. So, 
Here's some examples. Negative 3 plus negative 5. Okay, your number line, let's say your number line's here, you're at the origin, you go blah blah blah, three spots to the right or to the left, native territory, and then you're gonna go five more spots further to the left, negative territory, so you're gonna end up with negative eight. Okay. But what if you multiply these? Negative three times negative five, well a negative times a negative is a positive, and this is positive fifteen. So we see here that if we add and multiply the same two negative numbers, the result of adding two negative numbers is negative, but the result of multiplying two negative numbers is positive. So they show here that uh, John Redden shows here that um, just what we just talked about, negative 3 plus negative 5, it's the same as negative 3 minus positive 5, which is negative 8, and multiplying negative 3 times negative 5 equals positive 15. So, Let's show some properties here. The zero factor property. Factor is just something that's being multiplied. Okay. So zero time if zero is a factor, which means there's a zero zero is being multiplied by some real number, like A. Uh, well one thing is that we can change the order around. A times zero equals zero times A. And another thing is zero times any real number is zero. What about the identity property? Identity usually involves one, multiplying something by one. Not usually involves, that's what it does involve. Multiplying, multiplicative identity property. So multiplying A by one, you know, anything times one is gonna be that something, right? And you can switch the order around here, just like you did over here. So A times one equals one times A equals A. Associative property, remember associative means grouping. If you're a member of association, you're a member of group. You can associate, you can multiply the A by the B first in this A times B times C, and then take that AB result and multiply that by C, or you can multiply A by the result of B times C, which is sometimes called BC. Commutative means order. Uh, and just like we change the order around over here and over here, basically we're just saying that no matter what you're multiplying A by, whether it's 0 or 1 or anything else, we'll call that B, you can switch it around so it's B times A. Okay, so here's an example where we have 5 times 0, anything times 0 is 0, right? So that's going to be 0. And here we have 10 times 1. Anything times 1 is that thing. So that's 10. Okay. Here are the answers. Just as we expected. 5 times 0 is 0. 10 times 1 is 10. Okay. Now we have this grouping thing illustrated. Of the associative property. Okay. So we're just grouping with these parentheses. These round brackets are called parentheses. Although you probably hear me calling the brackets quite wrongly. Okay, so 3 times 7 is 21. And then multiply that by that result by 2, and you get 21 times 2 equals 42. But what if instead of doing that, we just held on to the 3 for a minute and multiplied these? 7 times 2 is 14. So now we multiply 3 times 14, which is 42. Okay? That's just what this is showing here and here. The value of each expression is 42. Changing the grouping of the numbers does not change the result. Okay? So if you are if you have a rectangle that you're measuring the area of... Um, actually, wait, that only has two dimensions. Let me talk about a box. Okay, you have a box you're measuring the volume of. You have got a width, a height, and a depth. Does it matter if you multiply the width by the height first, and then multiply that product by the depth? Or does it matter if you multiply the width by the product of the height and the depth? No, it doesn't matter. Same result. Okay, so we'll note here that multiplication is commutative. The order doesn't matter. If you're multiplying like uh, width times a height, okay, here I can use my rectangle example. 
uh, if you're multiplying width by height or height by width, it doesn't matter. Okay, but division, of course, it does matter, right? Because 10 divided by 5, a bigger number divided by a smaller number is going to be a number that's greater than 1. Just trust me on that for now. 5 is a smaller number than 10. 5 divided by 10 is going to be something that's less than 1 because it's a, it's a fraction of a whole, you might say. Um, like, if you have a pizza with 10 pieces and you have 5 of those pieces, you have 5 out of 10, which is half the pizza. Whereas, if the pizza only had 5 pieces and you had 10 of them, then that means you had two pizzas. So two is not the same as a half, okay? Um, we're going to use these properties to perform sequential operations involving multiplication division, and remember to do this in order from left to right, okay? It makes things a lot easier. Three times negative two times negative five times negative one, okay? So first we're just going to multiply these, these two factors. Three times negative two is negative six. Okay, we still have the negative 5 and negative 1 to multiply. Now we'll, we'll go with the negative 6 times the next factor, which is negative 5. Negative 6 times negative 5 is positive 30, right? Positive number. And then multiply that by negative 1. 30 times negative 1 is negative 30. So, because multiplication is commutative, the order in which we multiply does not affect the final answer. When sequential operations involving multiplication and division order does matter. I'm sorry, when sequential operations involve multiplication and division, order does matter. It matters because of this. It matters because of the division, not because of the multiplication. So we are going to go from left to right, okay? Uh, it's best to just go from left to right no matter what, all right? Just make life a lot easier for yourself. Um, so here we have 10 divided by negative 2 times negative 5 okay so what would happen if you did the multiplication first well as it turns out you would totally screw things up so uh, here let's see what happens if somebody didn't go left to right if they said well I'm a rebel I'm not gonna go left to right I'm gonna do this last part first they would leave the 10 out here and they would multiply negative 2 times negative 5, which is also 10, positive 10, right, negative times negative is positive, okay, so then they take 10 divided by 10, they again end up, end up with 1, that's not right, as you'll see here, the right way, the correct way to do it is to go from left to right, so from left to right, we got 10 divided by negative 2, that's equal to negative 5, positive divided by negative is a negative, okay, and then you multiply that negative 5 by the other negative 5 that we still have over here. So negative times negative is positive, so that's positive 25. So note that the order in which we multiply and divide does affect the final result. So it's important to perform the operations of multiplication and division as they appear from left to right, okay? You're not going to be a rebel, you're just going to do it from left to right because that's the right way, to, that's the correct way to do it. Okay, so let's try this. This example, negative 6 times 3 divided by negative 2 times negative 3. So, we're just going to do bit by bit from left to right. We're going to do this, and then this, and then this. Okay. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. You take that negative 18, and you divide it by negative 2. Negative 18 divided by negative 2 is positive 9. You still got this negative 3 that's carrying forward down here. So 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Okay, and here, let's try this example. Negative 5, they don't show the work, so there's a video if you want to watch it, but let's just try and do this in our heads, or you can write it down on paper. Negative 5 divided by 5 times 2 times negative 3. So negative 5 divided by 5 is what? Negative 1, right? Now take that negative 1 and multiply it by 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Now take that negative 2 and multiply it by negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. There are asterisks 
that can be used instead of the dot to indicate somebody's multiplying. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen the X as well, like on a calculator they usually show an X. Uh, so the asterisk means multiply and then instead of having this long division thing here where you have like here in this example where it says a half where you have the one over the two because if you have a you know a computer and you're typing quickly you might not want to go with all that you might just want to put a slash here forward slash so 14 slash 2 is just 14 divided by 2 which as it turns out is 7 5 times 3 is 15 by the way in case you're wondering Okay, the set of even integers is a set of all integers that are evenly divisible by 2, so they're spaced 2 apart, and we can also get that by multiplying all the, all the integers by 2. So, you know what I mean, like if you have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, you multiply those all by 2, you end up with negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, and, and the same with the positive side. So... Here you can see there's a gap of 2 between each of these, and they go on to negative infinity over here and positive infinity over here. Odd integers is a set of all integers that are not evenly divisible by 2, and these are the ones that happen to be in between these ones. Okay, negative 5 goes here, negative 3 here, negative 1 here, positive 1, 3, 5, and goes on forever in both directions. A prime number is an integer greater than 1 that's only divisible by 1 and itself. Okay, so the smallest prime number is 2. Because you can only divide 2 by 1 or divide it by 2. You can't divide it by any other uh, number. Okay, same goes with 3. You can only divide 3 by... What I mean is in order to get a... Um, a an, an integer result, okay? Um, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, okay? Um, I'm not saying you can't divide 2 by 1.5. You can, you end up with 4 thirds, um, but that's not an integer result. So pr by prime numbers we mean numbers like these, like 5, where you can't split it up and say, oh, well, this 5 is equal to 2 times 2 and a half. Well, we don't want halves and stuff. We just want to be able to say something like 6 equals 2 times 3. So that's why 6 is not a prime number, because it's divisible by 1. 6 divided by 1 is 6. It's divisible by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And it's divisible by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And it's divisible by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So. We don't want numbers like that. We only want numbers that can only be divided by 1 and by the n number itself. Okay? Everything here, all these, all integers can be divided by 1. Okay? So, in a, if you want to just set the 1 thing aside and just focus on how we want numbers that can basically only be divided by themselves. They can't be split up into uh, two factors that are both integers. So 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23 are the prime numbers that go on forever. And any integer that's bigger than 1 that's not prime is a composite number. It's composite because it's composed of a product of prime numbers. Right? Like 6 is composed of 2 times 3. 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. Okay? 30 is, well, you could say it's composed of 2 times 15, but 15 is not a prime number. We can see that 15 itself is composed of 3 and 5, which are these prime numbers over here. Whoops. Okay, so we say 2 times 15 is a factorization of 30, and 2 and 15 are factors. These factors divide the number evenly. But we have to continue factoring, okay? We have to continue going on with the composite factors as products until only primes, prime numbers are left. So that's why when we had 30 split into 2 times 15, we couldn't just stop there. We had to split the 15 into more prime numbers. So now we end up with 
a result that's only prime numbers. 2 times 3 times 5, they're all prime numbers. So the prime factorization of this number, 30, is 2 times 3 times 5. Okay, so now let's do that for the number 70. 70, can you divide it by 2? Yes, you can. You end up with 2 times 35. Okay, you can start with 2 because that's the smallest prime number other than 1, right? Um, no, I'm sorry. 1 is not a prime number. Why am I... All right, I'm sorry. Forget I said 1 is a prime number. I'm just being stupid, and it's kind of late at night. Okay, so... Um, you got the 2 times 35. Then you split the 35 into 5 times 7. So you have 2 times 5 times 7. Are these all prime numbers? Yes, they are. And if you're not sure, you can look at this list until you get to know what the prime numbers are. But uh, it'll they'll come to you with time. You'll you'll after a little while you'll be able to realize, unlike me, that one is not a prime number. Okay, since the prime factorization is unique. It doesn't matter how we initially factor the number. If instead of saying uh, 70 is 2 times 35, we could have done 7 times 10, and then split the 10 up into a 2 and a 5. And then if you order them from smallest to largest, you end up with 2 times 5 times 7. Same as what you ended up with here. Okay, And that's kind of just kind of like the standard way of writing it, is from smallest prime number up to the biggest. Some tests, called divisibility tests, are useful for finding prime factors of composite numbers. And let's look at some of those. If the integer is even, then 2 is a factor, right? Because remember that with all these even integers here, 2 had to have been a factor because we multiplied all the integers, all the integers that exist, even ones and odd ones, we multiplied those all by 2 in order to get these even integers as a result, right? So if that's true, then 2 must be a factor of all these even integers, okay? So that's why 2 is a factor of the even integer integers. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then 3 is a factor. Okay, so what does that mean? If you have 7, 7, 70, and you add 7 and 0, you get 7. Is that divisible by 3? No. So 3 is not going to be in there. But over here, you had 3 and 0, and you get 3. And you can divide 3 by 3, obviously, so then 3 is going to be a factor, a prime factor. Okay, now why is that a rule? Uh, I'm not going to get into that right now. If the last digit is a, f uh, is a 5 or a 0, then 5 is a factor. Now you'll notice that numbers like 10, 20, 30, they're all divisible by 5, right? Because they're all divisible by 10. And if something's divisible by 10, it has to be divisible by 2 times 5, because 2 times 5 are the prime factors of 10. Just think about this for a little while. And if a number ends with uh, 5, then it has to be divisible by 5. 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, they're all divisible by 5. Because they're composed of something divisible by 10 plus 5 by itself. So if it's 35, it's composed of 30 plus 5. The 30 is divisible by 5 because it's, it's divisible by 10. So you have 30 divided by... 5, which is 6, and then plus 5, and you factor that, you can divide that by 5, 5 over 5 is 1, so 35 divided by 5 is 7, or you could say 35 divided by 5 is equal to 30 over 5 plus 5 over 5 equals 6 plus 1, so 7. And now that I've totally confused you, let's move on, okay. So, what, if, what are we going to do if we have something written as an English sentence, and then we need to put it into mathematical notation? Well, you'll see keywords like product, multiplied by, of, times. Hopefully, we're not still saying times, but I even say that sometimes. Like, oh, what's 2 times 3? Um, instead of saying 2 multiplied by 3, because it's just easier to say times. It's actually not such a bad thing. It'll save you a lot of time. Then who wants to say 2 multiplied by 3? 
And this of thing, nobody really says that, okay? Unless you're talking about bags of apples, and you say three bags of four apples each, or something like that. Okay, so the asterisk or the dot, it's the multiplying. Quotient is divided by ratio per, okay? Like three miles an hour means three miles divided by one hour, okay? And the slash and the division sign are what you use there. So, quotient of 20 and negative 10, well, 20 divided by negative 10 is negative 2, right? Positive divided by negative is a negative. So, the quotient of 20 and negative 10 is negative 2. So, here, you take in something that was written in English, and you wrote it as an equal you wrote it as an equation instead right here and then you got a, a result okay and if they want you to answer the question in a sentence then you can write it like this the quotient of 20 and negative 10 which is exactly the way the question was written and then just say is whatever it is at the end what's the product of the first three positive even integers well 2, 4, 6 are all the first three positive even integers. And what's the product of them? Product of means you're multiplying. So 2 times 4 times 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48. So here, if you're writing it in a sentence again, you just use the same language that they use in the question. This is the exact same language as you notice up here. Okay, so here's an example. Joe drives 342 miles on 18 gallons of gas. How many miles per gallon does he get? You're just going to take the number of miles divided by the number of gallons, and that will give you your miles per gallon. And if you know that 18 times 19 is 342, which if of course it is, then you don't need a calculator here, and you can just uh, divide, all right, 342 miles divided by, 18, divided by 18 gallons is 19 miles per gallon, so he gets 19 miles per gallon from his vehicle, and again, this is worded exactly the way the question is worded. How many miles per gallon of gas is this? And he gets this many miles per gallon. Per is dividing, okay? So, now what if we want to take a single value that typifies a set of values? We can take a mean, okay? But you're not used to saying mean, you probably say average. Like, okay, we have the results from the test that everyone in the class did. What was the class average? You're probably used to saying things like that instead of saying um, mean. When, when you get a bit older, you start saying mean because there's different kinds of averages. And I'm not going to get into what the difference between a arithmetic mean and a geometric mean is. If you're interested in finance and that sort of thing, you might want to look into that at some point. But for right now, all we care about is, is arithmetic means, which is a simple average. This plus this plus this divided by 3. Okay. This guy had three exam results. You just want the simple average of them. You just add them up and divide by how many exams there were, and you get your result of 85. That's the average. Zero and division. You've got a dividend divided by a divisor equal to a quotient and then going the opposite way you have 6 times 2 equals 12 you got these are the factors and this is a product okay but if you take the product and you divide it by one of the factors you're using one of those factors as a divisor and you're going to end up with the other factor as a quotient anyway um, the dividend 12 is evenly divided by the divisor 6 to get the quotient 2. So, it's true in general, if we multiply the divisor by the quotient, we obtain the dividend. 
okay? Here it's just saying basically this. Dividend divided by divisor equals quotient, so quotient times divisor equals dividend. Zero divided by, okay, so let's consider when the dividend is zero. Zero divided by six is zero, since six times zero is zero, right? So zero actually divided by anything is going to be zero. Zero divided by any non-zero real number must be zero. And we say any non-zero number because you can't divide things by zero. Um, and this is going to prove that you can't divide things by zero. What's 12 divided by zero? Well, in order to figure that out, let's just turn it around and say what zero times something is 12. What's that something? Zero times anything is zero. Zero times something equals 12. That's impossible. So this is what's called undefined. There is no answer to 12 divided by zero because it just doesn't make any sense. So um, there's no real number that zero times uh, question mark equals, t equals 12 will, will be satisfied by. Uh, by satisfied by, I mean a real number that could fit in as the question mark and it would work. So the quotient, which is the question mark over here, quotient over here, it's actually a factor and you're getting a product. But over here it's a quotient because it's uh, you got your uh, dividend divided by your divisor equals the quotient, right? So the quotient is undefined. And if you try it on a calculator, you'll get an error and the calculator will freak out on you. So um, let's summarize here. A is not equal to zero. Then zero divided by A or zero over A is zero. Okay. And it, it, A can't be zero because then we're going to have this undefined stuff. So and A divided by zero is undefined no matter what a is anything any number over zero is undefined you can't do it so what about if if zero if the dividend and the divisor are both zero zero divided by zero equals what well that implies that you have zero times something equal to zero and that something could be anything okay any number could work here zero times five could work zero times three could work so the quotient is uncertain or indeterminate, okay? Uh, we don't talk about indeterminate things that often, but anyway, this is indeterminate. And in this, for the, for the sake of this course, we'll just say it's undefined, okay? Uh, just think of undefined. Anything over zero is being undefined, no matter what the numerator is. We don't want to get into this kind of thing where, well, the numerator is zero, so I'm not going to call it undefined. I'm going to call it indeterminate instead. It's okay. You can just call it undefined. Summaries. Summary. The section positive number times negative number is negative. Negative number times negative number is positive. Multiplying is commutative. The order matters. Dividing is not. Uh, I'm sorry. The order doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. Width times uh, height times depth, or height times depth times width doesn't matter. Okay. Division, however, is not commutative. Big number divided by small number is not the same as small number divided by big number. Okay? Uh, and so on. So, when simplifying, work the operations of multiplication and division from left to right. Don't be a rebel, just go left to right. Even integers and numbers evenly divisible by 2 or multiples of 2, and all other integers are odd. All the other ones fit in between the uh, even ones. Prime numbers and integer bigger than one, that's divisible only by one and by itself. Composite numbers or integers bigger than one that aren't prime. Composite numbers can be written uniquely as a product of primes. Okay, so if you break down a composite number into its prime factors with your prime factorization, those prime factors are unique for that unique number, unique composite number. The prime factorization of a composite number is found by continuing to divide it into factors until only a product of prime remains, primes remains, okay? Uh, 
then to calculate an average, divide the sum of the values, which means take take the values, add them all up, and then divide that by the number of val values, or what we might call number of observations. Zero divided by any non-zero number is zero. Any number divided by zero is undefined. Okay, so here you have your exercises. The odd ones have answers listed, the even ones don't, and uh, all the questions right at the end, the discussion board questions do not have answers written. So let's just look at those real quick. Show the associative property of multiplication with any three real numbers. So you could take, I don't know, 2 times negative 1 times 3 and show that 2 times negative 1 and then multiply by 3 is the same as 2 times negative 1 times 3. Okay. Show that division isn't commutative. I think you could figure that out. Um, why is it important to work from left to right? We we went through that already. Um, discussed div division involving zero. Uh, why is the result sometimes zero, and why is it sometimes undefined? Well, if zero is in the numerator, the result is zero. If you're looking at a fraction of a pizza, and it has eight pieces, and you have zero th of those pieces, you have zero out of eight. That's zero divided by eight, which means you had zero pizzas. Okay, now... What if you ate eight pieces of pizza, but the pizza had zero pieces in it? How many pizzas did you eat? Well, there's no way to figure that out, because how could you have eaten eight pieces of pizza when the pizza has zero pieces in it? If the pizza has zero pieces in it, basically there's no pizza, so how could you have eaten eight? It doesn't make sense. It's undefined. Okay. Um, we're not going to get into this or this. Uh, okay, other methods besides arithmetic mean uh, used to typify, we could get into median and mode. Um, I don't want to get into other stuff, just more advanced statistical stuff we could talk about. We don't have time for that. So, 